Hi everyone, in this video we'll be taking a look at using clip gain in Pro Tools. Now this isn't a new feature of course, but as the title of this video suggests, this will be a complete guide covering every single feature of clip gain. Clip gain provides a quick way to adjust or match the gain of clips from different sources in a Pro Tools session. Clip gain is applied pre-insert, so it happens on the source clips before they hit any plugins or the channel fader. It allows you to boost the level of a clip by up to 36 dB or to reduce it. I find it really useful when working on post-production dialogue in particular. It allows me to get everything to a fairly consistent level before the audio goes through any compression or other processing. At its most basic, clip gain allows you to turn an entire clip up or down a level by clicking on this icon and dragging it with your mouse. This dB value is called clip gain info and the clip gain fader is just to the left of it. If you need to adjust with fine control, hold down the command key as you do this. As we go through this video, I'll mention several shortcuts relating to clip gain, and they'll all be summarized on a screen at the end for easy reference. Fortunately, all of the clip gain shortcuts use the same modifier set on your keyboard, which is Control and Shift if you're on a Mac. On Windows, that would be Shift and Start. I'll be referring to the Mac shortcuts from here onwards, but for the Windows equivalents, just substitute Control Shift for Shift Start. Okay, so the first shortcut which you'll need if you want to work quickly and efficiently is the one which toggles the clip gain info view on and off. The shortcut is Control, Shift and Equals. There's also a clip gain line which can be shown or hidden with Control, Shift and Minus. That's minus at the top of the keyboard rather than on the numpad. That does something else which we'll get to later. If you really like going into menus, you can also find these in the clip section of the view menu. Since we've now got the clip gain line displayed, we should speak a little bit about the difference between static and dynamic clip gain. Static clip gain just means that you've applied a single adjustment to a whole clip. So if I turn this clip up or down, the absolute value is indicated in decibels, just here. Because it's a single adjustment, the clip gain line is just flat. However, we also have the option of making changes which vary across the course of a clip, and this is dynamic clip gain. This can be adjusted in a similar way to how you might edit volume automation in that you can use the grabber tool to add breakpoints and then pull things up or down, or you can delete them by option clicking if required, or you could use the trim tool. I like to use this as part of the smart tool so I can make a selection with the selector tool and then immediately adjust that selection up or down with the trim tool. Unlike volume automation, clip gain affects the waveform of the audio to reflect the fact that it's pre-insert. After making dynamic changes to the clip gain, you'll notice that the clip gain info display no longer displays a dB value. If you think about it, this makes complete sense because there's no longer a single value which represents the gain adjustment applied to the clip. You can make an overall adjustment to the dynamic clip gain by clicking on the fader and dragging up or down. This scales everything in level, retaining the overall contour of your dynamic clip gain. As you make these changes, a decibel value is temporarily displayed along with a delta symbol, which looks like a little triangle. This denotes an amount of change rather than an absolute dB value. If you right click on the clip gain fader, there are four options. You can bypass, clear or render the clip gain, or you can show or hide the line. Bypassing it will temporarily suspend clip gain for that clip, meaning it will play back with zero dB gain adjustment. You can see a faint version of the breakpoints when it's bypassed. Bypassing can be useful to do an A-B comparison between the clip gained version and the original. Clear is fairly self-explanatory, it just completely removes the clip gain. If I undo that for a moment, there's actually another way to revert it back to zero, which is to option click on the clip gain fader, which obviously is quicker. Render clip gain will create a new clip which has the effect of that clip gain baked into it. This new clip has its own clip gain line with the settings of course defaulted to zero, and you can make adjustments from there if need be. Time for some more shortcuts. To clear clip gain from a selection, it's Control Shift and B. To cut the clip gain, Control Shift X. And if you just want to copy it, then the shortcut is Control Shift C. Once copied, pasting it is just the usual, so that's V, as long as Command Keyboard Focus up here is enabled. If it's not, well, you can obviously enable it, or you can just press Command V, and that does it. You can copy a static or dynamic clip gain setting. If the length of the destination clip is less than that of the original and you're pasting dynamic clip gain, then as you might expect, you'll paste just the first part. If your destination clip is longer than the source clip from which you copied the clip gain, then you're going to get this. We saw earlier that clip gain can be edited with the trim or grabber tools. 
If you want to add a breakpoint at the current cursor location, you can also use Ctrl Shift E to do that. Personally, I usually just click with the grabber, but you've got the option to use the keyboard shortcut if you prefer. Another tool which can be used to draw clip gain is the pencil tool. Most of the pencil tool variants work with this, including freehand, line, triangle, square, and random. The two which don't are parabolic and S-curve. Here's a point worth noting about the pencil tool when used for clip gain. It's constrained by a selection if you have one within the clip. So if I've got this part selected and I start drawing with the pencil tool, starting before and finishing after the selection, it actually only ends up within the selected range. This differs from conventional automation such as volume, which is not bound by the selection when using the pencil tool. Time for another couple of shortcuts. You can nudge clip gain up or down in level by selecting a part of the clip a whole clip or even several clips and holding down that clip gain modifier set so control shift whilst pressing the up or down arrow keys on your keyboard so that's control shift up or down arrow by default this will nudge in half db increments this value can be set in preferences to anything from 0.1 to 6 db by the way as an alternative to the up and down arrow keys you can scroll your mouse while holding down control and shift to increase or decrease the clip gain you may also want to nudge the clip gain left or right, and you can do this with Control Shift and plus or minus on the numpad. Basically, the usual nudge keys with the special Control Shift clip gain modifier added. Exactly how much this is going to nudge it by is subject to the session's currently set nudge value. There will be occasions when you'll want to convert clip gain to volume automation, or vice versa. To demonstrate this, I'll show both the clip gain line and the volume automation. In this example, I've got just clip gain. And so to convert it to volume automation, I can select the clip or I could make an edit selection, then go into the edit menu and choose edit, automation, convert clip gain to volume automation. Alternatively, I could convert it the other way with edit, automation, convert volume automation to clip gain. There are no shortcuts for these functions. In this example, that was straightforward enough, but bear in mind that clip gain offers up to 36 dB of boost and volume automation is limited to 12 dB, so any values above plus 12 dB will be lost when converting clip gain to volume automation. There's a very important point to consider when converting between the two, which is the thing I mentioned earlier about clip gain being pre-insert. Volume is post-insert, so if you have any dynamic control on the track, such as a compressor, you'll get a different result with clip gain than you will with volume automation. Let's take a listen to an example. So here it is with clip gain. We've got guys who are absolutely at the top of their game, young, energetic professionals. And then with volume automation. We've got guys who are absolutely at the top of their game, young, energetic professionals. And you can see the hit in the compressor differently. We've got guys who are absolutely at the top of their game, young, energetic professionals. We've got guys who are absolutely at the top of their game, young, energetic professionals. As well as converting between clip gain and volume automation, you can also sum the clip gain and volume automation together in a process called coalescing. This again can be found under the edit menu. So if for example, I've got a clip with some dynamic clip gain and some volume automation too, I can coalesce these one way or the other to end up either as clip gain or volume automation. Again, the plus 36 dB versus plus 12 dB thing needs to be considered along with the total summed level of the two. If I coalesce clip gain to volume automation, the end result is that the clip gain and volume automation are combined into the volume automation playlist with a clip gain line flattened to zero. Or if I undo that for a moment, I could do it the other way where the result is the two combined to clip gain with the volume automation reset to zero. Well, that's it for this video. Here's a summary of all the shortcuts covered. I hope you've learned something new about using clip gain in Pro Tools. It's a key feature which I use in every single mix, and I think if you know all of the shortcuts and features of clip gain, you can work in a more efficient and speedy way. Thanks for watching.